I'd say first year, it went it went surprisingly well compared to all the modifications we made in the first year. Like we spent two months of modifications, days and nights, and all. it was really a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But uh, but this year it wasn't as bad. I mean, we had most things set up. Uh, we had to redo one field uh, just because of the GPS and learning curves. Let's say we did have to redo one field, redo the tram lines. But uh, on the equipment front, really we had to redo the hitch. Uh, we found that you know after harvest we, we kind of discovered that okay if we want to combine next year and want to offset our hitch we're actually going to be two inches outside of where we thought we'd be and that would have left a two inch strip of unharvested crop on every pass every 30 feet so we corrected that before the season started um, designed a new hitch we also had to switch around some shanks we actually double seed uh, have two seed tubes coming down on either side of the tram line just to just to capture a little extra yield from the from the area that's not so like we don't seed our tram lines um, for right or wrong we're just not seeding our tram lines um, so when you switch your hitch or offset your hitch you're actually moving that row inside the tram line so we don't want any we try not to get any rows or try not to get rows growing inside the tram line because they just don't perform very well and you can see that this year actually you can see you know the areas grown inside the tram line that are maybe six inches inside are just yellow and not not happy at all because it's very wet and it's very packed in that tram line so uh, i had to switch those around uh, switch the air tank hitch as well uh, we had to modify that as well and what we found we had to we had to align the steering on the air cart again like we did that last year you know we drove along we finally got to the field and you know you drive 20 feet and you see two tram lines well that's not good so we actually had to align our, our air cart because it wasn't following true so just the tie rods you know a couple of twists of the tie rods brought it back in line same again this year because we flipped our hitch we had to do the exact same thing and flip the tie rods or adjust the tie rods and bring the the air car back in line and aside from that you know that was it that's uh that's all the changes we had to make and you know everything still followed really true um i think the biggest frustration was our gps signal and you know it just the signal quality it just it just wasn't there this year you know there's upgrades going on and you know, I don't know if it was uh, the cell network or the wireless, uh, uh, the wireless uh, VRS station not broadcasting. I, you know, maybe it was our machine, but uh, you know, probably seven, you know, eighty percent of the time it was working very well. But the extra twenty percent really hurts. You know, when you're down, the sun is shining, and uh, and you can't go after rains and whatnot. It was really frustrating. So maybe once we get our tram lines established, you know, we can follow the roads really well. Um, that wasn't the case this year. You can, you can see the tram lines obviously, but, but just keeping within an inch, you know, when you're not used to steering any longer because of auto steer, you know, um, I don't know what we're going to do, but again, we're gonna have to find something because again, that, that's probably the biggest risk that we found or the biggest struggle was just GPS signal this year. Everything else worked swimmingly. Crops, crops emerged really happy. Uh, we were able to enter row seed really well. Uh, specifically like the canola into barley stubble or into wheat stubble were just dreamy but where we I was talking about lodging earlier and uh, we had some canola that lodged and that did we didn't get to interrow as well in lodged uh, canola stubble just because we were a little bit too tight you know what it would run into the uh, to last year's row which wasn't the end of the world but it was an interrow seeding like we'd want and maybe that's not the biggest issue in canola stubble and we've narrowed in our opener as well so we used to run a four inch paired row. Now we're down to a two inch sideband. So that'll give us a lot extra room to inter row seed each year. Um, so that, that problem that we experienced this year with the lodge crop and not that much room in between the stubble, I think that'll go away with a narrower opener. So other than that, yeah, we're, we're keen. We're, you know, it, it's, it's really wet in our area right now. And uh, I'm really thankful that it is because uh, they say CTF is supposed to work really well in the dry years, but when it's really, really wet, and your soils can actually breathe because you're not driving over top of them. You know, like you've confined that, contra that traffic to one specific area. I think we'll really start to see some benefits. And it's hard to say if we are right now, but I think time will tell. Yeah, once we get those tram lines established and we start stop packing and that soil does start to loosen up and open up. And you can feel it now when you're walking from the tram line and off or even the headlands, because we're always turning on the headlands, right? So that's got extra compaction anyway, anyways. And everybody's headlands do because you're always turning equipment there, right? So. So you're starting to see areas where, okay, yeah, you can see the areas where it is compressed or the crop isn't as, as tall or as lush just because there's just so much traffic there. So 
again, we're happy. We're, we're still gonna, you know, we're still full on um, with the concept. I think uh, we're just getting more excited every year just about, you know, the, the potential it has, especially in years like this where it's so wet, everybody's making ruts, everybody's struggling in our area um, to apply fungicides and herbicides, that sort of thing. So I think, uh, I'm hoping we'll get on a little sooner than everybody else. But again, we're only year two, so well, baby steps. Well, you mentioned yeah. residue management too. And yeah, how critical that is. absolutely. Yeah, residue management, that's a, that's a big one. And I, I should have mentioned that because that's probably the biggest eye opener that we've had. I mean, we'd run a gleaner. Uh, it's an older gleaner. It's an R7. It's old. We know it's not that great. So we did one year thinking, okay, we'll, we'll see how it is and maybe we'll have to make some modifications to it because we're not afraid of modifications at our place. Uh, maybe we'll make some modifications to it to make it better, but we may end up just trading off and, and getting going into a different combine. But residue management is so crucial when you're running down the same tram lines year after year because for the most part, uh, let's say canola, where you know we're 30 foot or 30 foot swaths um, when you're when you're loading like especially canola when you're loading eight feet ten feet behind the combine and a little bit to the rest of the uh, the swath widths you're loading that area and all of a sudden you can see where the emergence is a lot poorer right it, the plant stand density isn't as high the ground's cooler just because that canola stubble is so like that straw is very blonde you know reflects light so it's colder and it's wetter the emergence is poor so you keep doing that year after year you're gonna have a problem right and you could say that with barley stubble with wheat stubble. I mean, you keep loading the same area. So everybody else gets to mask it. You know what I mean? Like you go around, because I, I would argue that there's not many machines on the market today, combines that is, that can actually spread 30 feet evenly. They're always, and I see it, like I scout, you know, almost 35,000 a year. And I see it everywhere, but a heavy harrow just kind of drags it off a little bit. So you don't see it as much. I see it because I'm looking for it. But you know, you go from where areas don't have as much trash and it doesn't matter what kind of stubble you're in. The areas that don't have as much trash, you know, you're up to 30 plants per square foot of wheat or 35, and then you get into those heavy residue areas and all of a sudden you're down to like 24. It'll produce yield, but you know what? It's probably seven days behind and it might catch up eventually, but what have you lost in the meantime? And you really don't see that from the road or from the quad unless you're looking for it. So everybody gets to mask it, their residue management issues with uh, with a heavy harrow or seating across or on the diagonal and just kind of masking it but again it's in my opinion like the residue management is probably one of the the number one hindrance to crop emergence and to yield germination maturity yeah, across the prairies it's just we don't see it because we get to mix it around with a heavy harrow or you know seating in, in either way so we really need to address that and i i don't i don't think i have it solved just yet but we're gonna have to solve it in the next three months so um, we've got some ideas, but uh, again, we'll, uh, we'll put some pen to paper and some thought to it and hopefully get that residue issue addressed so we can spread across 30 feet nice and evenly. So. Mm -hmm.